everybody, I'm Scott with Starkey Family Fixing Rigging Up. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure that you've got your notifications turned on. That way you get notified when I put out a new video. Now, before we get move on, we're going to have to deal with some sound. Because, unfortunately, there is, I'm at a truck stop right now. And there is a company driver that, I'm not exaggerating, this is a local uh, truck stop where I live. And there's a company driver down here that has abandoned his truck and left his uh, generator running for the last, I'm not kidding you, four days now. And uh, so we're going to have to deal with listening to that horse crap. But anyways, <clears throat> what we're doing in this video today is... Now I'm going to show you the code inside my truck and everything. We have an ABS sensor bad on the trailer. This is a uh, 2005 Benson. Basically, uh, what's happening is, and I'm going to show you all this, I'm getting a code on my dashboard. When the truck is running, this light is actually activated the full entire time. Uh, then I'm going to show you what actually the problem is. So let's get this video rolling. Okay, so I'm inside the truck and I've got it running. As you see, I have a fault. And you can see the ABS light right there. So when I tap on it, the code is giving me 545137. Okay, so when I tap on it again, SLD 005. Okay. So what that actually is, is it's telling me that that is an ABS sensor for the trailer. And it's also telling me which position. And right here, fell number five. So that's the position. Now I'm going to go back and show you what the light looks like on the side of the trailer. Okay, so here's the light, and as you see, it consistently stays on, and this actually is an ABS light. Now, unlike the other lights on the trailer that, you know, you'll see like down here, for example, on the rub rail, okay, the position right under, over top the back tire on a flatbed trailer, this is where your ABS light is actually going to be at. And if it stays on, then you got a problem. So let me show you what this is causing everything to do. Okay, so now we're looking at the tire. Do you see the uh, spots where they're getting a little bit lower, like this one right here? What's actually happening is the ABS not working on this particular wheel is allowing this wheel to lock up going down the road when I apply the brakes while the other three are completely fine and uh, you know the ABS is working fine on those this particular wheel set right here I can actually see in my back mirror that uh, the wheels are actually locking up and I can actually see some smoke coming off of them and that's why you want to make sure you get this fixed as soon as possible Otherwise, your tires are going to completely fry off. Okay, so this is actually the problem that I found. Can you see where this rubber here is actually uh, rotted and broken apart here? Well, this right here, you can't really see it because of the uh, dirt. But the wires are actually exposed right here. So... I'm actually losing uh, connectability because the wires are not uh, completing a circuit. So you see this zip tie right here? That's the whole problem. This zip tie has ate into the wire. And that's what I actually found. So you can see the hole that this goes back to. You can't actually, uh, on this particular trailer, and actually as long as it's been in here the chances of me actually being able to pull this sensor out is none so what we're actually going to have to do is we're going to have to pull the tires off 
and then we're gonna have to pull the uh, brake drum off so let me crawl out from underneath here and uh, let's start on it okay so seeing as I don't have my impact with me but I do have my uh, one inch ratchet and uh, my sockets and of course my cheater bar this is actually gonna take me a little while to get this uh, rim off so we're gonna skip past the tire and rim and I will come back when we get to the drum see you in a few minutes okay so what we're gonna do is to get that brake drum off we've got to take the slack adjuster and loosen it up and this right here is the bolt that we do that with and on mine it takes a 7 16 clicking sound is normal okay so let me show you the brake drum see how the pad is off the drum now well, that's actually freeing up the drum, so now we can just go and pull it right off. Okay, so I also wanted to explain why it's dark now and it was light earlier. I had some people come down earlier that, uh, well, they were trying to hold me up on my video. So I just packed up, left, and came back. So sometimes you got to do that because people don't know when to shut up. Hate to be like that, but when I'm trying to make a video, you should understand, you know? So anyways, don't, don't take that wrong because I do, I, I would help anybody. But when people clearly see me trying to make a video and they just keep on, that's the way it goes sometimes. Anyways, let's go ahead and pull this drum off. See how that slides off? There's no tension on there because of the brake chutes are actually turned off. So by the way, these brake drums don't drop any on your feet because guess what? They weigh a lot. Okay, so before we get any further, I want to show you the sensor that we're actually using. This is an Automan brand. The part number is 577A5342. Okay, and this right here is the actual part that we're using. This is the sensor. This is the wire. This is why they call it a 90 degree. You see how the wire turns into a 90 degree. So let me show you what where this actually goes. Okay, so this right here thing that looks like a gear well what it is it's actually got little notches inside of that okay this right here is the actual ABS sensor so what happens is this end of it reads all these little notches as it spins okay so what happens is when I don't have power it's not reading these notches it's not going back to the computer so when I hit the brakes, it's locking the brakes up and not releasing at all. See, when you come to a stop, you need to anti-lock brakes, especially when it's raining or snowing or anything like that, even dry weather. Otherwise, your wheel's just going to lock up. That's why older cars were very unsafe with the brake systems. You watch old movies, and old cars would just slide and slide and slide with the brakes locked up. But nowadays, that just doesn't happen. So, the goal is, this right here, this part right here, is like a little holder, okay? And this sensor slides inside of this. Well, as you see, it's impacted with dirt and corrosion and everything. So, the problem is here, we've got to really saturate this thing down and hope that I can get this thing out with no problems. Because sometimes these right here 
they break. And if it breaks, that's bad. Then we have to go with uh, plan B and hopefully we don't have to see plan B because plan B is bad and we do not want that. So let me go ahead and start saturating everything down. Unfortunately for us, I thought that thing had ran out of fuel because it had quit, but it fired back up. So back to the noise, right? Okay, first thing is we really got to spray this thing down. I mean really spray it down before we even touch it. Okay? And these teeth and stuff back here, we're going to have to clean this up a good bit. So, make sure you get your little wire brush. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to clean this up a little bit here. That way we can see a little bit better what we're dealing with, okay? And what happens is all this corrosion and everything, we're liable to break that thing off, and that's why I'm trying to avoid. We still may, even being careful. See, I just acquired this trailer in the last month, and it had a couple problems on it, so, uh, that's what we're dealing with. This brake chamber over here, it actually blew. It was like the first day that I took possession of the trailer, it blew. That was nice. And I had a little bit of a light issue on here, nothing major. And now we've got this sensor problem. But when you buy stuff pre-owned, that does happen. And that's the way it goes. Now make sure when you do clean this stuff that you wipe everything off because if you do get into an inspection you don't want the DOT to think that you have a leaky seal that's bad very bad they'll leave you at the side of the road over something that's not even the way it is you know what I mean basically all we're doing while we're in here we're just saturating this stuff and cleaning out this gear thing out all this debris here so when we do get a new sensor in there we just don't have any problems you know now what I think I'm gonna do is I might try tapping on it just a little bit but ultimately I think I'm gonna come back in the morning and give that penetrating oil some time to actually set in this right here is PB blaster and it's actually pretty good but what's good about it is it actually foams in there. Now, I'm not getting paid for this or anything. I'm just telling you what does work. But that foaminess actually helps to absorb inside all those little crevices. So, just something to keep in mind. It's a product I use and I'm happy with. And if I'm happy with it, then guess what? I'll tell you guys the same thing. we can wipe this thing off now now same thing goes if you get in here and you do see any oil you gotta get you gotta get that taken care of because most likely you do have a bad wheel cell. But as you guys see, we got in here and everything was nice and dry, so we're good. Now what I'm doing is I'm just spinning this around with a rack. And that's kind of helping to clean all this stuff up. And you can actually see the gear pattern a lot better than what you could before. So that's good also. Yeah, we got some layering here on this. But unfortunately, these brackets are welded on. So that means that that would have to be re-welded. Which is a pain. Because unfortunately, my welder is uh, in my garage. And I can't get the trailer home. So... 
that means I'd have to take this somewhere. Yeah, saturate that thing good. Just try to wipe, wipe it off your brake shoes though, because you do not want it on your brake shoes. Any oil on your brake shoes is not good. If I could turn it any. Now I can't even turn it in there, so this is going to be. Unfortunately, this is going to be kind of fun. Chances are, it'll probably end up breaking off on me. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is I've got a punch and I've got my little hammer. Now, I'm going to do little baby taps to try to loosen this up. I'm hoping that it does loosen up, but I don't know. nice if this thing just slid out of here but I'm not sure if it's gonna happen as you see it's pretty well frozen in there Try to turn it. That ain't working too good. My flashlight's about dead. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna saturate this thing up one more time and then call it quits for tonight. And hopefully that penetrating oil does its job and we can get that out of there in the morning. So let's go ahead and call it a night. Okay, so I'm back here the next morning, and unfortunately, you can hear it and I can hear it, but that semi truck still has not ran out of fuel yet, so we gotta listen to that generator. I believe this is day five for it actually running and the truck being abandoned, but oh well, that's the way it goes. Now, just so nothing would get stolen last night, I had to put everything back together. So, let me go ahead and get this jacked up, get the tires, hub, all that pull back off of it, and uh, we'll start working on that sensor again. Okay, so here we got everything back apart now. Here's the sensor. Here's the casing that goes around the sensor. 
this is the part that uh, we're most concerned about because we do not want to break that off the axle so anyways I did saturate this last night using this this is a PB blaster so I am going to saturate it again Maybe. Did the can lock on me? I think it did. Whoop. There we go. Gonna yeah, really saturate that thing down again. Okay, so I am going to twist this in here, if I can. You try to be really careful with it. So I'm just using some vice grips right now. And it is actually broke free. It don't feel the best, but it does turn. Which is a lot better than what it did last night. So that oil actually did do its job. It is free enough now. This is what we want to do. We just want to work it back and forth. I'm going to get another shot of uh, this penetrating oil in here. So I'm going to give that a chance to actually uh, get in there a little bit better. So now, what we're going to try and work on is right here beside. This wire here should just simply unplug. Should. <coughs> there we go. And these are the connections. You see two little prongs right here. This is the harness that's actually going up to the uh, controller and then I don't know if you can see that inside but uh, it just pushes in place. So I gotta cut that zip tie so let me go get some cutters real quick. Okay so I've got my cutters. As you see, that's been on there a little while, hasn't it? But this is also, the zip tie is <clears throat> also what has destroyed this. Can you see that exposed right there? Right there is a whole problem. Okay, so we're going to get back to the sensor now. We're going to see if we can pull this thing out. I'm going to put some pressure <clears throat> up against my vice grips and try to push it back. That ain't doing it. Let me grab a hammer. Let's see if I can tap this back a little bit. Okay, it did move. So let me get another grip on it. I think it moved again. Let me tighten this up a little bit. Okay, so the sensor is coming out. So the PB blaster did do its job right so now should 
be able to take a chisel right here to this upper lip. Let me bring the camera in a little bit closer here so you can see. As you see, the sensor is out. I still can't move it very well because where it's actually coming out now. But that's fine. Let's try and tap it out with the rest of the way with this chisel. If I don't drop it. <laughs> Let me try a longer chisel here. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. I don't think it's ready to work with the chisel yet. Let me try this flat one here. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to use the vice grips on this one. Actually, this twisting motion is actually bringing it out a little bit. You get another grip on it. And again, you don't want to hit this like super hard or anything. You just want to do like small taps. Tell you what, let me try this. Now that I got an angle to actually hit this at. There we go. Can you see it popping out there? Okay, let me get another grip on it. Let me twist it a little bit. We might be able to pull it out now. Okay, we got it. So all we're gonna do is, if you can see that, we're just gonna pull it out of the hole back here in the back and uh, this right here is all this sensor is can you see that it's just a, uh, a round shaft and you can see where I poked a hole in it using my uh, punch so that's what I'm saying if you ever take these out with a punch they're pretty well trash and you can see the lip here on the back once you pull these out a lot of times they're garbage so there's actually a retainer in here also. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, this is the package with the new one. <clears throat> now we got some grease to use also. We'll set that right here for right now. But let me show you what we're basically going to be doing here. Okay, this housing, there's a little sleeve that looks just like this, okay? All it is, is just a hardware kit that comes with them, and this sleeve goes inside of there, okay? Now, if you notice, the outside of the sleeve crushes in. That way, it actually locks in place. And once you get this sensor in here, this holds that sensor tight. These little, uh, push points that are in here they put just enough force on here that it holds all that tight so let's go ahead and get that old sleeve out now so we can put this new one in okay you see how it's deteriorated
Okay, it's out of there now. Now we gotta clean up that area inside there. So let me try to get my punch in there. There's still some flags, I guess. There's another piece. There's another one. Another one just fell out. Okay, let me try to spray that out in there. shot everything else out of there so that's good I don't feel anything else in there okay so now this is a brush I would normally use with my drill so <clears throat> it's about the same diameter as what this housing is I'm gonna try to shove this up inside there and see if I can clean it out any get my pliers now. We really just want this housing nice and clean. And this wire welding action here will help quite a bit. out okay so now we're gonna shove a rag up in here I'm just gonna stick a punch in there okay that should be pretty well cleaned out now yeah that's not bad at all okay so what we're gonna do is now we're not gonna go overboard on it like we normally do We're going to use some anti-seize. Maybe. There we go. I'm just going to brush a little bit up in there. That should help it a little bit. Container that I showed you. Now we're ready to put that in there. Okay, that's this thing here. Now, if you look, there's one side of it has two little prongs bent out, and then the other side does not have any of that in there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to stuff that in first. And I would advise putting the split in towards the inside, but it's up to you. Okay, so that just goes in. 
get a pair of uh, pliers here. And all I'm going to do is, I'm using it to hold on the top and bottom so I can push this in. Okay, as you see, it's come out the other side. And the anti-seize came with it, so let's wipe that off. But since this housing here, we don't want it to rust anymore. We are going to paint it with anti-seize, the outside of it. help it uh, from rusting any worse than what it already is. So now it's actually time to put the sensor in. Okay so since we're putting the sensor in we don't need the anti-seize in there right yet. We're going to run the rag in one more time to clean the anti-seize out from the inside of that ring and I'll show you why okay so that's pretty well cleaned out so let me grab the grease okay so I want to be clear we're not gonna put all the grease in here <clears throat> because this is electrical grease and we need it in the plug-in also but we are gonna take some of it and we are gonna wipe it on the inside of this And that'll make it nice and slick for that sensor to actually go in there. Okay, so let me grab the actual sensor. This has a little zip tie on it. Be careful. Okay, so I'm going to feed the sensor in through the back here. And now we're going to bring some ex excess wire in so we're not in a bind. And now we're just going to feed the sensor in. You put a little bit of grease on this. Okay, so what I'm doing is my, I've got my chisel, or my punch actually wedged in behind. So I'm actually putting a little bit of pressure on that and trying to force that thing in. And it seems to be working a little bit, but you just got to get a little bit of time. And I put some more grease on there. Whew. Seems like it's starting to let go a little bit. Sorry if my uh, LED light's leaving some lines. That's just the way LED lighting, lighting does. Okay, so I gotta get something else in there. What's happening is I'm running out of a place for a pressure point. So I can actually pull in this chisel. Or this punch rather. Uh. Okay. It 
just came out. Let me see if it's far enough. Hopefully it is. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is, after messing with this thing, geez, be very careful. How about that? Clean it off, for one. But you're going to take this sensor and press it all the way forward to this little gear thing here. Okay? And, uh, Once it's all the way up against that, and you're still able to free, be freed up, and it's not interfering with anything, you're good to go. Now, don't, I'm not recommending to do this, but I do need to turn this sensor just a little bit because the wire is up against this uh, spring here. Let me uh, put a rag over this. should be okay right there okay so we got this in let me get press this sensor in just a little bit more again okay so we're good to go there Now you see, nothing's hitting. There's just like a hairline gap there that you could probably put like a matchbook through. Okay, so you do see where the wire is actually laying in here? Well, there's some little rub points like that right there. What I'm actually going to do is, uh, before I put this together, I'm gonna to take some uh, black tape. I'm gonna pull the wire out, and I'm gonna wrap an area about two inches on here and that'll help absorb some of that just to try to prolong the life a little bit of the wire and where I've got to take it underneath the zip tie I'm gonna do it again there also and then since there is actually excess wire I'm gonna to have to roll that up and uh, hang it also so any of these little pressure points with zip ties or where it's laying I'm going to take this vinyl tape around and uh, make it less likely for it to rub through. So after I get done with that, I will uh, come back and show you what I did. Okay, so here's the first one. You can see all the vinyl tape there. So when I pull it in, it's just laying right there on that hole and that vinyl tape will be in there to help protect it. Now, once I get the strip tie in there, it will stabilize the wire so it won't be moving around any. So let me go back to the next point. Okay, so you can see how I've got zip tied right here. And you can see the tape that I've got on there also. So I'll show you what that actually did for me on the inside here. You see that hole there? Let me try again here a little bit better now taking pressure off of that cord now I don't know if you can tell but it's actually not even touching the side of that hole there okay so uh, anyways now what we got to do is we've got a bundle of cord that we got to roll up and tie up out of the way and then I got to plug it in right here so let me go get this rolled up Okay, so what I did here was I just wrapped everything with black tape again, put a zip tie here, and zip tied the wire coming out. So we're going to run this right here, and we're going to plug these two together, and then I'm going to put a zip tie right here. So let me go get some grease in here. If you notice there's like a little notch right there so that is actually a lineup 
so you can't really you can't screw this up how about that as long as you get the notch in there there we go and just simply push it together and that's it you want to make sure that you do use electrical grease that way no moisture or anything like that can get up in there that's always a good idea to do something like that okay so we are actually just going to rig this up right here okay and uh tell you what let me go put these together a little bit more vinyl tape this is just going to protect it and hold them together we're just going to lay that right there we're going to take a zip tie and this will hold them still That should hold everything together right there what do you think about that actually it's all a little bit of a mistake this little beam is actually gonna rub the wire if I have it like that so let me put it back the way it was see I, even I make some mistakes too put this one here down under the wire that's the way it was and now we can zip tie these things together how about that grab a uh, zip tie okay there we go now nothing will be rubbing. And that'll be nice and stable there. You got play there. So we're good. Okay, so let me go ahead and put the uh, brake drum back on and the tires back on and get this lower back down. And I'll be right back okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the slack adjuster and what that's going to do is it's going to tighten up the brakes we're going to put them all the way to the drum and then back them off about a half a turn and i am using a 716 socket on this slack adjuster now if you watch you can see the the gap on the brake shoes go away So make sure we bring it down, get it tight. Okay, so there's tight. So what I like to do is I start at the bottom. There's a quarter. Okay, there's another quarter. And I'm going to do just add another click there. So now the brakes are actually adjusted okay so i'm back inside the truck and it is like really super hot in here <laughs> but anyways what i'm expecting is once i turn the ignition switch on i'm gonna let it cycle you're gonna hear my low pressure uh alarm for my airlines or air tanks and stuff because i haven't let the truck run but otherwise what i'm expecting is for the anti-lock brake light for the trailer to pop on and then it'll go through some cycles and once it realizes hey there is a sensor and it is working it should go off if not sometimes after you hook everything up the tire actually has to do some rotations and then it resets so let's see what happens here
Okay, so mine actually accepted right off the bat, and my analog brake light is gone. So let's go back and check the light on the side of the trailer. Okay, so I'm back here, back the trailer, and as you see, the light is off. I do have the ignition switch on still, but uh, as you see, we're good to go now. I'm Scott with Starkey Family Fixing Rigging Up. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've learned something. I hope if you're actually experiencing the same problems, you'll go underneath your trailer and check it out and see if you can find the problem yourself. It could be the same thing. It may be something else. But if you do find it, I hope you go in and try to save yourself some money and fix this yourself. This could have easily cost me several hundreds of dollars somewhere. Now keep in mind, if you're going to go to a place, even though that they find a problem, they're going to check out everything on your trailer and waste a couple hours of time. So just keep in mind, this one little sensor can cost you a lot of money. Now this one here, I think this one here cost me around $45 for this actual sensor, but I have seen them cheaper and I've seen them more expensive. So, it's all on how you look at it. Well, everyone, I'm out of here. I am hot. <laughs> the sun's beating down on me. So, catch my other videos, and have a good day. Thank you.